If you live in northwest lower Michigan, chances are you've seen this beautiful ship sailing the bays and open waters of Lake Michigan. This is the Inland Seas, a 77-foot schooner with traditional rigging, reminiscent of the ships built in the 1800s, and this is the primary school ship for the Inland Seas Education Association. Inland Seas has provided over 118,000 students a breathtaking introduction to the ecology of Lake Michigan. Here's lead scientist and education specialist, Jeannie Williams. Inland Seas Education Association is an organization that's committed to protecting the Great Lakes. And we do that through educational programming that's incredibly engaging and hands-on and first person. So you get these um, intimate experiences with the water where we are out on the water with, on a sailboat and collecting things from the lake that give us personal connections with what is beneath the surface. That's stuff that we can't see. So Inland Seas began in 1989 and the idea was to help people understand how these lakes function. And we weren't just doing activities that were fun and interesting and engaging, collecting fish and looking at plankton are fun, interesting and engaging, but we also are interested in understanding what's actually happening here and collecting data that gives us a true picture of what is going on with the species and the water quality and being able to track that over time. So this is our 30th year of data collection. So after the season, we'll have 30 years of data, which is a, a substantial data set. Students and educators collect and analyze samples of the water, fish, and the benthos, or bottom sediments. Using standard scientific methods, they lower a secchi disk down into the water until it disappears from view as a measure of water clarity. The story of clarity over the last 30 years is that it's been increasing dramatically. So in 1989, the secchi depth that we got was about six meters. At about six meters, that disc disappeared. You couldn't see it anymore. Now we see things more like 18 meters. Um, earlier this spring, we had a depth of 27 meters in West Bay. That is really far. That's super clear. That's a huge difference in clarity. And that seems to be largely contributed to the zebra and quagga mussels that have now filled the whole lake. So they cover the entire bottom of Lake Michigan and they're incredibly efficient at filtering out the water. So they're taking out all of those small particles that would intercept the light. Zebra and quagga mussels feed by filtering out the microscopic algae, protozoa, and other organisms collectively known as plankton, leaving less and less food for the base of the food chain. A healthy lake has organisms in there and they need to be able to have the nutrients and the things they need to survive. So super clear water means less organisms that are living there and which can be problematic if that's the direction that the lake is heading in to clear and clear. So we're concerned about that because it means that there just isn't enough food for the whole food web. So that translates to smaller game fish, fewer game fish, and that directly impacts all the people who want to fish and our fishing economy. This long-term data set also shows what happened after Inland Seas students first discovered the round goby in the waters of Sutton's Bay. My name is Sue Krastek and I'm a volunteer lead instructor. I'll use the fish population as the dramatic example of change. Um, we have pie charts that show when the round goby, an invasive species, entered Sutton's Bay and we have um, very very dramatic changes in those wheels and how the proportion of biodiversity in native fish has really changed since the introduction of the round goby in around 2005 and 2006. Yeah, 2015 was probably the year that things were the gloomiest. I mean it was very few other species did we ever catch in our nets. And then just this season, just this spring, we've caught 22 Iowa darters, which is a native fish that we had only previously caught one or two a year, but there were many years where we didn't catch any. So what the students can do aboard the ship and with the frequency that the Inland Seas goes out, we can detect small changes and minor shifts, which can then turn into major change. Have, uh, 
um, consistent data being collected, measuring the same things for as long as we've been measuring them, you get some really good trend numbers that, uh, you know, that, that paint a nice picture of kind of the roller coaster that, that we've seen in different parts of our lakes. Um, and so I, I think that that's important. Sampling, doing the same type of sampling over extended periods of time uh, um, is always important. And I think we can contribute that. And I hope that, you know, that data is something that can be used 30 years down the road to help us solve the next problem. You know, I think it does tell a story about the impacts of certain things. We certainly can see the impact of zebra and quagga mussels when looking at our data. It's a very clear picture. You can see the impact on, on fish population uh, after, the, after the round goby. Our data paints a very clear picture of that that I think is apparent to anybody, student or adult alike. Um, and so that also, to me, is the other area. I really like the idea that we have some powerful data that because it's collected by students and then analyzed by students, it helps them to get connected to something that's bigger. They're doing the work with us for a purpose and they can see their work combined with the work of 120,000 other students. Uh, going forward, we think about, well, what does that mean for the future? So, okay, we create this new balance and, and that's, that's going to be good. Well, m maybe. I mean, we just don't know. I think what's happening in the Great Lakes right now that's so interesting is that there's every year a new thing is happening. Like nobody could have predicted we would suddenly have more Iowa darters this year. It's like a strange thing. We also have this increase in Cisco or lake herring. That also happened out of nowhere. So just in the last couple of years, suddenly we have this new, and these are native species, they're, they're resurging. We don't know why, we don't know how that's happening. So there's a lot of mystery and questions. So one of the things for me is that this is an excellent time to be studying the water. We need to be looking more than ever because there isn't the stasis as a whole. It's changing all the time. So our monitoring efforts are essential. <laughs>